In slow motion, the test cars move towards each other on collision courses, unwinding behind them the coils that ran to the devices by the impact zone. As they collided, the debris of wings and fender floated into the air. The cars rocked against each other as they continued on their disintegrating courses. In the passenger seats, the plastic models transcribed graceful arcs into the buckling roofs and windshields. Here and there, a passing fender severed a torso. The air behind the cars was a carnival of arms and legs. I think the key image of the 20th century is the man in the motor car. It sums up everything. The elements of speed, drama, aggression, the junction of advertising and consumer goods with the technological landscape, the sense of violence and desire, power and energy, the shared experience of moving together through an elaborately signaled landscape. We spend a substantial part of our lives in the motor car and the experience of driving condenses many of the experiences of being a human being in the 1970s. The marriage of the physical aspects of ourselves with the imaginative and technological aspects of our lives. I think that the 20th century reaches its highest expression on the highway. Everything is there. The speed and violence of our age. Its strange love affair with a machine with its own death. The styling of motor cars, and of the American motor car in particular, has always struck me as tremendously important, bringing together all sorts of visual and psychological factors. As an engineering structure, the car is totally uninteresting to me. I'm interested in the exact way in which it brings together the visual codes for expressing our ordinary perceptions about reality. For example, that the future is something with a fin on it, and the whole system of expectations contained in the design of the car expectations about our freedom to move through time and space, about the identities of our own bodies, our own musculatures, the complex relationships between ourselves and the world of objects around us. These highly potent visual codes can be seen repeated in every aspect of the 20th century landscape. What do they mean? Have we reached the point now in the 70s where we only make sense in terms of these huge technological systems. I think so myself, and that it is the vital job of the writer to try to analyze and understand the real significance of this huge metalized dream. I'm interested in the automobile as a narrative structure, as a scenario that describes our real lives and our real fantasies. If every member of the human race were to vanish overnight, I think it would be possible to reconstitute almost every element of human psychology from the design of a vehicle like this. As a writer, I feel I must try to understand the real meaning of a lot of commonplace but tremendously complicated events. I've always been fascinated by the complexity of movement when a woman gets out of a car. Her ungainly transit across the passenger seat through the near side door. The overlay of her knees and the metal door flank. The conjunction of the aluminized gutter trim with the volumes of her thighs. The crushing of her left breast by the door frame and its self-extension as she continued to rise. 
the movement of her left hand across the chromium trim of the right headlamp assembly. Her movements distorted in the projecting carapace of the bonnet. The jut and rake of her pubis as she sat in the driver's seat. The soft pressure of her thighs against the rim of the steering wheel. The close relationship between our own bodies and the body of the motor car is obvious. American automobile stylists have been exploring for years the relationships between sexuality and the motor car body, the primitive algebra of recognition which we use in our perception of all organic forms. <laughs> 